which means you should at least know how to do the simple ceremony of blessing your family with corn pollen. You are to be of service to your fellow Dene, to your family. Bless your family, and you can do that. As any individual Dene, or anyone really for that matter. <laughs> We rely on many of the things that I had uh, learned while I was uh, in my youth. And I had some great men and women and that that were medicine people. And back in the generation that I grew up in, it seemed like every family had uh, two or three medicine men in their family. And I was always encouraged from an early age to uh, learn the uh, correct procedure and the uh, learning of the songs and prayers and that was, was very difficult as uh, I was growing up. And the uh, teaching came from my grandparents, right, really. My grandfather, Laughing Medicine Man, Hatake Natloha, was what he was known by. And then my great-grandfather, which was his father, was uh, Salau Hati Jai, or sometimes uh, they would call him uh, the Tachehe uh, Hatati. He was the medicine man that conducted his ceremonies using the uh, sweat lodge. And so I spent a lot of time with these uh, men, and they were very elderly in, in the, uh, their time period, and uh, they always encouraged me to uh, tell it the way that they were telling me. And so many times after they had told me the story or some particular thing, they would ask me to repeat it to them. And uh, then I would uh, do that. And then other settings, sometimes they would ask me to come over here and tell this story. And so it was that I would uh, be called on at various times to be able to uh, uh, tell the story of certain origin of songs or prayers or portions of ceremony or other teachings in that that might be contained in the uh, winter stories or the Trot and Coyote stories. And they always said to me, which was to say, don't make it so that it's abbreviated. Don't make it so that it is short on the information that you should share. And so it was that I was encouraged always to learn the proper presentation of the uh, information. And it was that um, I was told at one time that uh, I should set my goals to uh, learn all of the different ceremonies that I could learn in uh, my youth. And so it was that I was able to understand the, uh, the purpose of uh, collecting uh, the sacred soil from uh, the sacred mountains. And that I approached the mountain from the east, walked to the top, and uh, built an altar. And then on that altar, offer up the sacred stones, and then, of course, then do the procedure of collecting the, the uh, sacred soil. And the sacred soil is always uh, to have us remember that uh, as we collect that soil, we make a promise to the holy people that as we represent those people, that we will be able to do it as a service to our loved ones and to our family and to our people. And that... Uh, we do it in a way that is the most sacred approach to doing such things. And so we make that promise that is made between yourself and the holy people. And so it is that that is the first that uh, you would uh, be involved in learning and preparing yourself to uh, be able to uh, share with people information. And so I've uh, taken the opportunity to uh, walk to the top of several of the mountains in that and collected uh, sacred mountain soil. Then, of course, the uh, time that I was uh, in my youth, it seemed like every family had at least two or three medicine people in their families. And uh, I have been sidetracked, of course, during that time and uh, really never went all the way in learning all the things I should have learned. But uh, after the uh, opportunity seemed to have passed, the uh, old people always uh, encouraged me. Is what they used to say, and which means you should at least know how to do the simple ceremony of blessing your family with corn pollen, or to have somebody that might need your help to be able to take some corn pollen and to put it in their mouth and offer up a prayer, either in a song or some uh, particular sacred uh, ways of doing such things. 
And so that was the teaching that I had received. Being around medicine people, I have had so many, so many of the great uh, medicine people of, of recent times and uh, learned from them many of the things that uh, we've been able to share with you in some form. And I remember the uh, late uh, Nebby Jensen from uh, Gray Mountain. Uh, he was uh, by clan, he was my brother. And so we, many times we spent uh, time together and, and uh, doing different things uh, to learn and to understand the teachings and that of our people. And so it was that uh, from them I learned that you don't charge an absorbent amount of money or any kind of uh, gifts and that that might be offered to you. That you allow the people that might ask you to perform a ceremony for them to just give you what they can and what they're able to. And uh, to never ask for a specific amount. That what they can give you is what they are able to do. And that's the way you're supposed to provide your service to people that might need your help. And uh, in, in Navajo we call Beoka, which is to ask a medicine man to perform a ceremony for you. And traditionally, the only thing that you would really provide is a yasakat, which is what the medicine man would sit on. And today, when we see some of these people performing this ceremony, they think a yasakat means a whole stack of uh, some kind of uh, material or linen of some kind. That's not what it means. And then, of course, uh, if they wanted to just give you a piece of turquoise or uh, a portion or an amount of corn pollen or even sacred smoke, then that's all they're able to give you. And that should be enough to satisfy your, your services uh, for them to conduct a ceremony for them in their, in their troubles. And so the teaching is that uh, you are to be of service to your fellow being, to your fellow Dene, to your family. And so even today, Azani uh, is to bless your family. And you can do that as any individual Dene, or anyone really for that matter, to be able to bless your family and to use the corn pollen in a proper way, to use the sacred smoke in a proper way. They prepare a hogan, clean it out and uh, put a fire, make a fire in, in the hogan and warm up the place. And they would then invite the family members into the hogan and everybody would sit down and uh, the individual would of course sit down at the uh, west end of the, uh, the hogan. And then they would uh, take out the corn pollen pouch and they would then use the corn pollen pouch and say a prayer. Or they could put it over there by the entryway to the person that is sitting closest to the entryway to the east and begin to uh, pass the corn pollen pouch around the, uh, the family members. And everyone would take a pinch of the uh, corn pollen and uh, put it on their head, on their tongue, and then sprinkle it to the direction east and say whatever it is that they might want to say in their small prayer. And they would, of course, it would be passed on to the uh, members of the family until it went all the way around. And if they wanted to include the uh, sacred smoke, the nato is what we call it, the mountain tobacco, then that would also be rolled in the traditional way in the corn husk. And then they would uh, begin that also by the doorway and then have it come around in a clockwise direction. And everyone would then take the, uh, the puffs of the uh, sacred smoke and blow it into the, uh, the four directions before passing it on. And then uh, bless themselves, of course, with the sacred smoke. And that smoke is to uh, carry prayers and that to the holy people. After that is done, then they would then offer up a longer prayer for all of the members of, of the family as, uh, as the, uh, who, who use the corn pollen. And so anybody can do this particular thing for their family and bless their family. And so those are the teachings on that that uh, is available. And so it is that anyone that is feeling responsible for their family and the welfare of their family, and they want to give blessings to their family, that's one way that they can perform these ceremonies. And so those are the things that we are told. <laughs> Thank you.
Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. I can't.